Hi, my name is Steve James. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 448. Welcome back to our Weekend in the Word. The theme for the weekend is Seeking Spiritual Matters to Edify the Church. Our last great teacher this morning is Bruce Mahone from Virginia. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about what we should rely on. It's nice to have stuff to rely on. We all have challenges where we find things that are unreliable. This has been a bad car week for me. My uh, car, the uh, check engine light came on. Fortunately, it's under warranty, so I took it into the dealer, and they're trying to figure it out, and then they gave me a rental car, and then the rental car wouldn't start. (laughs) So I called the rental car, and they sent a tow truck, and the tow truck guy was smart enough to know how to start the rental car, but then it wouldn't start the next time, so I think I got it figured out. So I'm having a hard to rely on cars challenge week, (laughs) but I'll get through it. We all have things like this. We have times when the heater doesn't work or the, or the, uh, you know, the air conditioner is on the blink or something's going wrong. We all have times like that. And, uh, this, but it just relied, reminded me how great it is that we can rely on God because you think you get a new car, you think it's reliable, but then it isn't. And, Many things in life are like that, or you hire a professional to do a job for you and think, boy, this person is just the best, but then they let you down. So these things happen. These things happen, and uh, it's nothing to worry about, nothing to get upset about. We all know how to work through these challenges and come out okay, but I'm just so glad we have a God who is reliable, and we don't have to you know, go back and tell him to fix it under the warranty, because God just takes care of stuff. So let's start in 2 Chronicles chapter 13. 2 Chronicles chapter 13. And verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah, and there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. So Jeroboam was the king of Israel, Abijah was the king of Judah. And Abijah, verse 3, set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array with against him with 800,000 chosen men, being mighty men of valor. So Israel, being a larger nation, had twice as many soldiers as the southern kingdom of Judah. Verse 4, And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemariah, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam and all Israel. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever? even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, has risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. Verse 8, And now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David? And ye be a great multitude, and there are with you golden calves, which Jeroboam made you for gods. you got a big old army, but you're worshiping golden calves. Verse 9, Have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? that so ever, whoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. But as for us, verse 10, those of us in Judah, the Lord, Jehovah, is our God, and we have not forsaken him and the priests which minister unto the Lord. 
are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The showbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. And behold, verse 12, God himself is with us for our captain and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them, so they were before Judah, and the ambushment was behind them. So not only was Judah outnumbered two to one, but they were surrounded. They had the army of Israel in front, and the army of Israel in back. Verse 14, when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind, and they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam. That's what you need. You need God to go fight for you, and he's reliable. And Abijah, uh, and the cho- just a minute, verse 15, then, uh, then the the men of Jer- excuse me. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah, and the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter, so there fell down slain of Israel five hundred thousand chosen men. Those numbers are remarkable. Because Judah had 400,000 soldiers. Israel had 800,000. And with the 400,000 soldiers of Judah, they slew 500 of the 800,000 Israelites. Amazing. And it's because they shouted and asked God for help. Verse 18, Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time and the children of Judah prevailed. Why? Because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. They relied on the Lord God of their fathers. Isn't that amazing? That word relied is also translated rest or lean upon or support themselves on. They leaned on God. They relied on him and he came through. And that is such a great thing. Because as I say, things in this world, don't get me wrong, I'm very thankful that we have cars, and we have heated houses, and we have running water. We have wonderful things. But sooner or later, they all break down, or have to be replaced, or have to be repaired. And uh, you can't put 100% reliance on them, because they're not 100% reliable. Although most of the time, fortunately, they were. But God... He's reliable all the time. And it's so wonderful to have something, someone totally reliable to rely upon. Verse 19, And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel and the towns thereof, and Jeshana with the towns thereof, and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. And the Lord struck him and he died. But Abijah one who relied on the Lord waxed mighty, married 14 wives, begat 20 and 2 sons and 16 daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah and his ways and his sayings are written in the story of the prophet Iddo. That's just amazing. Well, great to rely on the Lord. Let's go to chapter 16 of Second Chronicles. Here in chapter 16, in the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, so Asa it was the king of Judah at that time, in the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, so he'd been king for thirty-six years, a long time, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. He wanted to block him in. And here in verse 2. 
Then Asa brought out silver and gold of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus. So Asa was being attacked by Baasha, king of Israel. So he sort of leapfrogged over Israel to the north and went to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria tried to buy some support from him. And Asa said, verse 3, There's a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go break thy league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto the king Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they smote Ijon, and Dan, and Abelmayim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Baasha heard it that he left building Ramah and let his work to cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof wherewith Baasha was building and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. Now look at verse 7. At the same time Hanani the seer, the prophet, came to Asa king of Judah and said unto them, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and hast not relied on the Lord God, the Lord thy God, therefore is the host, the army of the king of Syria, escaped out of thy hand. So he relied on the king of Syria, and had he relied on God, he could have not only beaten Israel, but Syria. Um, verse... Eight, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host, a big army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hands. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God's eyes are running all over the place, seeing who he can help. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have worse. Then Asa was wroth, he was angry with the seer, the prophet put him in prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa impressed some of the people at the same time. The old story, don't shoot the messenger. Well, he shot the messenger, so to speak. Verse 11, And behold, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet. So remember, this started in the 36th year, so he lasted about three more years till he was diseased, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to physicians. Now, as we know, as the Lord knows, nothing wrong with seeking to physicians, but you should also look to God. And he didn't look to God. And Asa, verse 13, slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. So after he turned away from God uh, by paying the Syrians to help him, he lasted about five years. Verse 14, they buried him in his own sepulchres, which he had made for himself in the city of David, and laid him in the bed, which was filled with sweet odors and divers kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art. And they made a very great burning for him. So, in chapter 13, the king of Judah trusted in the Lord and had great victory. In chapter 16, the king of Judah, instead of relying on God, relied on the Syrians and did okay for a while, but in the end, ended up dying pretty soon. So, Psalm 34. We'll keep looking here. Psalm 34. Verse 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him, none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So Psalm 34, 22 again. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Desolate. And that word trust can mean to seek refuge, flee for protection, put trust in, confide or hope in. In other words, rely on. None of those that rely on God.
God, the Lord of the Lord, Jehovah, the God of Israel, shall be desolate. Might have some challenges, might have a few ups and downs like we do, but won't be desolate if we put our trust in him. Uh, Psalm 118. Psalm 118. In verse 5. 118 verse 5. 118 verse 5. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? If I have God on my side, what can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And to trust, of course, is to again seek refuge with them, confide in, hope in, or we could say rely on. It's better to rely on the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to rely on the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Now that's a big deal. The princes, they're the ones with the power and the money and the clout. Uh, in our culture today, I was <laughs> talking to somebody who wasn't familiar with the British aristocracy about how they have the royalty, then they have the dukes, then the earls, then the barons, then the lords. Well, today we have the chairman, the CEO, <laughs> the other officers in corporations that sort of are, quote, royalty in, in, our, in our land. Well, so to trust in princes might be to trust in one of these billionaires you see, or some big company, or perhaps a government agency. Um, it says here, again in verse 9, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, or people with great wealth, or great power, or great influence. Sometimes it's good to know people in great power and wealth and influence, but we don't put our trust in them. We don't put our trust in them. Our trust is in God. Nothing wrong if you need to get your street plowed and the plows aren't coming. Nothing wrong with having a friend on the city council you can call, who can call up the mayor's office and shake the trees and get him to show up with a plow. Nothing wrong with that. That's the way our government works, and that's just life. But you don't put your trust in that. You just, you know use that kind of connection when you can but God is the one who comes through for you so that's why we put our confidence in him uh, Proverbs 3 very familiar verse I've thought about my whole life and perhaps you have too Proverbs 3 and verse 5 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. He's the one to rely on. He's the one to trust in. And lean not unto your own understanding. See, God wants us to think and figure stuff out. And we should. But ultimately, we should trust in the Lord. It's when we put our own understanding or our own view of the world above God, that's when we have a problem. It's good to think, it's good to plan, it's good to figure your life out, but then you have to go to God, pray to Him, ask Him for help, listen to what He tells you, and ultimately put your trust in Him. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Go to Isaiah 31. Here we go to Isaiah 31. Egypt for help and 
stay or rely trust on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel neither seek the Lord this would be like that king of Judah we read about earlier in Chronicles instead of asking God for help against Israel he trusted in the king of Syria and in the same thing then woe to them that go down to Egypt for help you see Israel and Judah were these two smallish countries in between some much bigger ones on one side was Syria the Babylonians the Assyrians on the other side was Egypt big powers so if they needed help the temptation was to go uh, ally themselves with one of the big powers and that's okay if God says it's okay to do it and if you don't ignore God but here these people were ignoring God so woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they're many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel neither seek the Lord they don't look to Jehovah for help uh, Isaiah 50 very important who you rely on Isaiah 50 and verse 10 who is among you that feareth the Lord and obeyeth the voice of his servant and walketh in darkness and hath no light let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God or rely upon his God let him rely upon his God let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God let's look at that again in uh, Isaiah 50 verse 10 who is among you that feareth or reverences respects the Lord that obeys the voice of his servant walketh in darkness and hath no light well, if you have no light, trust in the name of the Lord, rely upon his God. Behold, all you that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, the sparks that you have kindled, you know, relying on their own light instead of the light of God, this shall you have of my hand, you shall lie down in sorrow. When it comes for the light of wisdom to be able to live our lives, we need the light of God and his word. Without it, we will lie down in sorrow. So that's the advice in verse 10. If you have no light, you're walking in darkness. Trust in the name of the Lord. Rely upon our God. And that's what we do. Because he's the reliable one. Uh, Daniel 3. Ezekiel, Daniel. Daniel 3. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his servant, who sent his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him. They set their trust upon, they relied on God. So again, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, relied on him, leaned on him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Just amazing. Just amazing how King Nebuchadnezzar, king of this huge empire, schooled in worshiping the Babylonian gods, not the true God of Israel, he saw that the true God delivered his servants because they relied on him. They trusted him. Amazing. Let's go to Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12 and verse 10. Because
kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor preferring one another. Verse 11. Not slothful in business, not lazy, working hard, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, mental pressure, continuing instant in prayer. So we're going to have mental pressure. We're patient. We persevere. We continue instant in prayer. We continue to persevere. Be constant in prayer. We're steadfast. We're faithful. So as God is reliable and we rely on Him, we try to be reliable and faithful by continuing to pray. God doesn't ask us to form the heavens and the earth. The heavens are so big, every time NASA puts up more telescopes, they just find a gazillion more galaxies. You may have seen that on the news recently. They're going to keep finding more galaxies <laughs> the better telescopes they put up. That's what God did. He's faithful in so many things. What we've got to do is be faithful to pray. To be patient in mental pressure. Because we're going to have mental pressure. We're going to have challenges. And we want to be faithful. We want to persevere. We want to be constant in prayer. Then, uh... Yeah, verse 13 distributing to the necessity of the saints, given the hospitality. Now here's a challenging one. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. That's a hard thing to get to, but when I hear somebody having a really rough time or giving me a hard time, I try to think, they are having a very bad day if they got to treat me like that. I better pray for them. Because... If the only way they can express themselves is to be mean to other people and to me, then they have some big needs. So I'll pray for them. So that's what it says here. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. And then it goes on to read more great things. But let's uh, wrap up in Second Corinthians 1, verse 8. Second Corinthians 1 and verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. They had a very, very tough time in the Roman province of Asia, what we now call Turkey. Things were very tough. Verse 9, But we had the sentence or answer of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raiseth the dead God's the one they should rely on even though they were very bright very accomplished very talented men and women they had the answer that they shouldn't rely on themselves but in God which raiseth the dead verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death and still does deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And that's the way God is. We've relied on him in the past and he's delivered us. We're relying on him right now and he's delivering us. And we're relying on him to continue to deliver us into the future. That's the reliable God we have. Unlike things in this world that you know last one year, five years, ten years, then they have to be repaired or replaced. God has been taking care of us our whole lives. He'll take care of us right now, and until his son returns, he'll take care of us. Then when his son returns, he'll take care of us for eternity. So God's reliable. I'm glad we can trust in him, and glad we can read about this in his word. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for your reliability, your faithfulness, that we can trust you, lean on you, rely on you, and that we know you'll always come through for us. And if your son tarries, may we continue to look to you, continue to believe you, and to continue to see your power at work in our lives, not only to bless our lives, but so we can be a blessing to others as well. We thank you for all your wonderful love and your wonderful son who accomplished so much for us. And in his name we thank you and pray. Amen. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give 
so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.